Next, let's talk about the influence of propellers. So we're gonna draw a simplified aircraft here uh, with its horizontal. And uh, we're gonna say that the, um, that the uh, center of gravity is way up front here, just so we can draw things in the positive direction. And uh, we've got V infinity coming in. Uh, there's our side slip angle beta. And, um, and we're gonna try to keep the placement of this propeller somewhat general. So let's put it out here along the wing. And um, so this is going to be set uh, aft of the center of gravity, L sub P, the distance to the propeller. Uh, and it's also going to have some uh, distance, we're gonna call it Y sub P, the distance out from, uh, uh, from uh, the, the center of the aircraft out to that propeller. And that propeller is creating thrust. And, um, and if you recall, uh, when we looked at this, um, when we talked about the influence of propellers on pitch stability, uh, we talked about how the, the angles, um, how an alpha, an angle of attack, can create a normal force. And so that's the exact same thing here again. So if we were to look at, uh, let's say this is a, a, a right-hand turning propeller, so it's turning like this, we're looking at the nose of the aircraft, uh, and this propeller is coming towards us, so the thumb would be coming out of the page and it's turning to the right. So um, if we have some some velocity in the plane of the propeller here, then what it ends up doing because of a difference in drag on the two sides here, uh, because uh, uh, the drag on this side will increase and, uh, and then the drag on this side will decrease. And the net force there is actually that uh, will create an in, in a normal force uh, in this direction, okay? So, um, uh, so we have a normal force in in that direction uh, due to some velocity in the plane of the propeller. So if we so that that holds true here too. So if we have some velocity in the plane of the propeller due to beta, so now we have some velocity in this plane, it's going to create a normal force. And we're just just to be consistent in direction, we're going to draw that normal force in. Uh, we're going to call this y sub p, capital Y sub p. Uh, because that's the y force of the propeller due to beta, due to that side slip angle, and y is positive in that direction, so that's why we're drawing it in that direction. But really with positive beta, we would get a negative yp, we'd get a force in the opposite direction here. Um, another thing we talked about in the longitudinal, uh, uh, when we talked about propellers, is that um, we not only get a, li a difference in, in drag, um, you know, this has a change in drag, uh, uh, due to this, uh, due to an angle here, but we also get a change in lift. And so uh, actually in this example here, we'll have an increase in lift on this side and a decrease in lift on this side, which creates a yawing moment with angle of attack. So if we assume that this is our angle of attack for some, for a moment, uh, then, then some positive or negative angle of attack, some non-zero angle of attack will create a yawing moment. And so, um, so we actually have to include uh, a yawing moment on this, and I'm going to, to draw that uh, positive there. Um, uh, that's a positive yawing moment. Um, and that yawing moment actually is due to an angle of attack, not to beta, but to angle of attack. But we can't neglect that. Uh, in our study of propellers, okay? So I'm not gonna work through all the math here. I, you know, I think you can see the major contributing components here. We're just gonna jump to the final uh, equations here for the influence of a propeller about the center of gravity. And so the, the yawing moment um, due to the propeller can be written as uh, the yawing moment uh, of the propeller with zero alpha and beta, and we'll get to that in, a, in just a second here, plus some uh, change in yawing moment with respect to alpha times alpha, this is of the propeller, uh, plus a change in yawing moment due to beta of the propeller times beta, okay? So we have to account for both alpha and beta um, because alpha will create a a yawing moment due to the difference in lift on either side of these props, and uh, beta 
will create a normal force um, in the direction of of uh, in the same direction that beta is uh, is 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 going as well. So uh, okay, so C n not of p. So this is the this is the uh, yawing moment uh, when we have zero alpha and beta, and uh, this is equal to uh, two. And again, I'm not working through the math. I'm just I'm just giving you this final solution here. Sw over Bw times uh, Cn p comma alpha over j squared. J again is the advance ratio times alpha not p. So this would be the mounting angle of the propeller minus epsilon d zero of the propeller, the downwash of the propeller. Okay, so this is basically saying at zero degrees angle of attack on the aircraft, we could still have some downwash that this propeller is seeing. Uh, relative to its x axis, and it may be mounted at some axis that's not aligned with the fuselage reference line. And so because of that, even at zero alpha and zero beta, uh, we can be getting some uh, yawing moment, okay, because we get some positive angle of attack. And this term here is the change in yawing moment on that propeller with respect to alpha, okay? So that's something that you'd have to come up with uh, from wind tunnel tests, or, or there are some analyses you can probably do um, using like blade element theory or something like that, um, you might be able to come up with an estimate for that. But that's the change in the yawing moment on the propeller due to angle of attack, okay? Um, we also have the fact that it, it, it can be offset by um, some distance from the center of gravity, and we have uh, thrust. So, so thrust multiplied by this moment arm is also going to create some... Um, uh, some uh, yawing moment, okay? So even at zero degrees angle of attack or beta. So uh, we're going to have Y sub P, that location, over BW times, and then we're going to use an FT here times CD. And this FT is just the percentage of the drag um, uh, carried by this prop. Um, so... So what we've assumed here is that instead of plugging in thrust here, we're going to say, you know, if this was a four-bladed, uh, or, or excuse me, if this aircraft had four propellers, for example, then then this propeller would probably just be taking uh, a quarter of the drag, okay? So we're saying that, that the total thrust uh, from all the propellers has to be equal to the drag on the aircraft, and so we're going to swap out the thrust here for the drag coefficient and then just multiply this particular propeller by some fraction of that um, so this is a fraction of the total drag that's carried by that propeller. Okay, so this is the yawing moment on due to the due to the propeller about the center of gravity at zero alpha and zero beta. And now we can look at the terms that are proportional uh, to alpha and beta. So this is the change in yawing moment with alpha uh, from the propeller, and that is two uh, dp cubed over sw bw. Uh, times 1 minus epsilon d alpha of the propeller times uh, cn uh, p alpha over j squared. Okay, so uh, so basically what we're saying here is the change in yawing moment um, uh, as a function of angle of attack or, or, or change in moment, yawing moment due to a change in angle of attack um, is, uh, is related to, again, our change in yawing moment with respect to angle of attack from the propeller multiplied by one minus the change in downwash. Because as we change our angle of attack, we can have a change in downwash or upwash from the main wing. You know, if this is sitting in front of the main wing, then it'll be upwash. If it's sitting behind the main wing, it'd be downwash. But basically a change in that uh, downwash angle as well. So anyway, this tells us our change in yawing moment with respect to alpha. And then we can do something similar for beta. So Cn comma beta from the propeller uh, is equal to 2 dp. So this is the di diameter of the prop, is d sub p. Uh, L sub p is the location of the propeller behind the center of gravity. Sw times bw, uh, 1 minus epsilon s comma beta. So the downwash, or the sidewash gradient of the at the propeller times Cn, and this is a capital N, uh, p comma alpha. So this is the change in a uh, normal force with respect to alpha. Uh, okay, so so basically now we're saying uh, the change in yawing moment 
um, uh, due to beta is um, is uh, dominated by this normal force here. So if we have some some change in beta, um, then you know this is kind of rotated on its side. But if we pretend like that's now beta, then uh, we're going to get some um, some normal force due to that. And so that's this term here. That's the change in normal force with respect to alpha. Doesn't matter if it's alpha or beta. This is just a term that we know from the propeller. If we have a change in angle of attack, this is a change in normal force. And here we're turning it sideways. Uh, to get the the uh, the side force here that's then also multiplied by a distance aft of the center of gravity. Okay, that's what this L sub P is here, that distance. And of course, we can have a, a change in sidewash gradient uh, at the or a sidewash gradient at the point of the propeller. So anyway, these two terms, C and alpha, goes right in here. C and beta goes right in here. So in general, this is the main equation for how the, the propeller affects the yawing moment on the aircraft. Again, it can have a term when alpha and beta are zero, It can have then it has a term that's proportional to alpha and a, a term that is proportional to beta. One last thing I would like to uh, point out here is that uh, Cn uh, p alpha is, uh, is greater than zero for left-hand uh, turning propellers and uh, less than zero for right hand turning propellers. Okay, so this is important because um, uh, let's say that we have a we have another propeller here on the other side. If we make these counter rotating, um, what that means, and, and this CNP alpha is this term right here, what that means is that um, we can get rid of its dependence on angle of attack. Okay, so if these are counter-rotating, then the right and the left will counteract. So each of them will be creating a yawing moment that increases with angle of attack, but those yawing moments will be going in the opposite direction. Okay, um, and so the yawing moment from, uh, or this term in, in the yawing moment, this term that's proportional to alpha, uh, they'll have opposite signs and so those can actually uh, cancel out, okay? So uh, if they're counter-rotating. However, this term will not cancel out. So the change in yawing moment uh, with respect to beta, uh, this in, in particular, this guy right here, the C sub capital N, P alpha, um, is positive for right-handed and left-handed uh, propellers. Or, or And so um, anyway, this term cannot be canceled out, okay? so. Um, but we can uh, get rid of our dependence on alpha, or at least our, our, our trim settings um, that, that might be dependent on alpha, uh, we can get rid of uh, by using counter-rotating propellers because uh, this term then will go to zero uh, if we use, you know, use counter-rotating propellers on either side of the aircraft. Now what this also means is that if an aircraft only has a single propeller out here in front, uh, then trim, uh, your, the rudder required to trim um, will depend on our angle of attack because as angle of attack changes, uh, our yawing moment will change due to this term here. And so, uh, so then you have to put in some rudder just to trim as you change angle of attack, even without any side slip. As you change angle of attack due to your velocity or your, the weight of the aircraft, um, uh, you have to uh, trim out the yawing moment produced by that propeller uh, with your rudder. And this is extremely important on what are called tail dragger aircraft. So these are aircraft that, uh, that have a tail um, that actually uh, has a little tail wheel back there that, that drags while you're on the ground. Uh, and so your nose is at a really high angle of attack. And and so when you're first starting um, to take off with one of these aircraft, your tail's still dragging, and, uh, and it requires quite a bit of rudder deflection to counteract the, uh, the yawing moment coming from the propeller. So generally, you're at somewhere near, near full, uh, uh, you know, full throttle when you're trying to take off. And so you have a very strong yawing moment coming from that propeller because it's also at a at high angle of attack. And so, uh, so that's counteracted by a rudder deflection. And then as quickly as possible, uh, pilots try to, to get enough dynamic pressure on the horizontal tail then to lift that uh, tail off the runway. And so you can see some images here uh, where that tail now has been lifted 
off the runway and brought the propeller down to a lower angle of attack. And by doing that, then, then they don't need as much uh, rudder to trim out the aircraft uh, from the high angle of attack configuration.